Okay, welcome back. Um, part three. In the last video, you saw me give the interior of the span a right good old going over. And that was, what, back in the early days of the furlough period or the lockdown period. And uh, suffice to say, it's still pretty bloody clean like, because I haven't done anything on it since. So, take you into the back of the van. Yes. Lots and lots and lots of parts, so you can sort of guess where this is going. Um, beneath here, there's a brand new turbo down there. Yeah, there are head bolts. There's the old turbo and the old cylinder heads there. Yeah, it was um, a bit of a, a bit of a small problem. So try and cut a long story short. Gave the engine a complete service, new oil filter, air filter, fuel filter, fresh fuel in the van. Uh, turned her over and turned over and turned over and turned over it would splutter it wouldn't actually come into life so they get off it some new glow plugs to it then uh, got some new ngk glow plugs come to the cylinder head and yep all good all good all good and then oh dear and uh, i know what you're thinking you think i've probably cracked the head by cross threading it but in the past it looks like it already had some form of like helicoil that had been retapped. the thread was not tidy when i removed the old glow plug um and it's cracked the cast and clean off so that's one brown bread head there that is and you can just see as well like most uh abl engines if it'll focus a tiny tiny little hairline crack starting to appear in the uh in between the exhaust and the uh inlet valve openings there so the head's Yes, while some is acceptable, some cracking, like, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't want any cracks at all in the head, so that's, uh, that's well and truly brown bread, that head. It's not only that, it was a blessing in disguise, really, that the van engine didn't run, because inside the engine, there was something a lot more sinister hiding as well. Just turn the light on the phone. If you look down there, it's cylinder number one. You can see it's melted there, and not only that, we have a lot of... Uh, we have a lot of sidewall movement there. It's either, I think the bore is oval or the piston's oval because there's not much in the way side to side, but it's plenty of backwards forwards. And then here's number four for reference. It's barely moving. Number two and three are more or less the same. Um, so, yeah. Frustrating, really, when I put all new Campbell kit, water pump, uh, the whole lot, basically, on there, ready to go. Um, it was a bit of a gamble because the engine did run away about eight, nine years ago, like I said in the previous video, and uh, it didn't pay off, unfortunately. Um, so next job is to source a new engine, either reconditioned or a very good second-hand uh, running engine. It's a shame really about this engine because it's a low mileage one. It's only done like 90 odd thousand miles and it's ended up like this. Uh, they're not very easy to come by these ABL engines, so it's going to be a while before I find one. So in the meantime, I'm going to set about detail on the outside of the van now. As you can see, it's blue with added green or green with added blue, whatever you want to say. She's not very clean and tidy. So we'll be sorting that out next as well as in the back of the van. Um, but whilst I'm here as well, I might as well show you what other work I did during the furlough period as well. There's namely on the brakes. You can't really see a great deal up front there, but the calipers on the front, they were stripped and cleaned to a certain extent. And the pistons and the seals were all surprisingly fine uh, on this side. Now on the other side, I had to reline the caliper. The rubber hoses, the flexi hoses, are all in surprisingly good shape. But you can see there, I've put a new, um, a new hard pipe on there with some conifer uh, brake pipe. Yes, the shock absorbers look horrendous. Uh, so they'll be being replaced as of the bushes on the bottom there. But underneath, up front, she's surprisingly clean. You can just see there that the other side is a lot better than the uh, other side. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think the fuel pump might need a service on it before it goes on a new engine because it appears to be a bit wet around there with fuel. Um, like I say, once the once the engine's out, we'll we'll be tending to all that sort of stuff anyway. And then we'll go to the back of the van, right? And get up. On the back, I had a little bit more, um, a little bit more work done to it. The calipers were well and truly seized on the back. Lucky that I left the handbrake off when it's parked up those eight or nine years ago. So we've got a pair of new rear calipers on there. The discs, again, are in very good condition. I can only assume it's because they're well covered by steel wheels from the elements. As if I had alloy wheels on there, it probably wouldn't be quite as good. You also see I've put brand new, um, oh, plumbed in new hard conifer lines. Again, same on the passenger side. And uh, another brand new caliper on that side as well. So the brakes 
all surprisingly um, brake fluid tight as well there's no leaks or anything anywhere I pressure bled it at about 15 10, 10 15 psi no leaks at all we've got a good brake pedal so the brakes are all nice and free handbrakes nice and free um, I'll take you up to the handbrake mechanism actually because there were some springs on the actuating mechanism that were rotten go around the other side a bit easier um, they're just basically a load of old bed springs that I'd lying around and you see that that one is a, is a stainless steel bed spring out of an old bed that we threw out not long ago but the one that was originally there was completely bloody rotten to buggery so I've just replaced that and now we've got a fully working handbrake but like I say or say it's pretty tidy underneath here you can even see some of the original stainless shine on the exhaust over there um, but the rest of it's a bit buggered like that'll be being replaced in good time um, she is generally a very tidy van so now I'll uh, set about dragging the old girl out. First time she'll have moved, admittedly un not under her own steam, from this spot in eight, nine years. Here we are. The old girl out of her resting spot. Pulled her out of there. It's been that long, but the stones are even bleached. Yes, it is a different day, by the way. The weather is compared to the first half of the video because it is the following day. But yes, we've got her out of here and the next part is all being well. She shall be rolled into here. I can't really get much in the way of footage here because it's a bit awful because there's only two of us doing this and me matey pulling us out with his uh, with his eye looks. But yeah, there you can see the true extent now as to how skeggy she really is. And she's going to get the cleaning of the century. Now in a current resting spot where she's going to be worked on got a bit of a lean to here you know so keep me out of the elements and keep me out of the shit weather but this is where she'll be uh, spending most of her time now uh, whilst I'm sourcing bats um, and now we've got much more room to get about giving her a bloody good clean look at the state of her I feel bad for letting her get this way like but you know you forget about these things there you go to show you how long it's been since the uh, thing was on the road 2011 last tax disc so yes gonna put you down there get the pressure washer out and a bit of snow foam on it and we'll give her a good old scrub One half down, one half to go.
there we go that is one van soaking in some organic snow foam there so it shouldn't be too harmful to the um to the two pack paints on there so we're just going to leave that dwell now for a bit and maybe go for the wheel arch again because i missed a bit there uh but yeah i like that dwell i'm going to sort out some um sort out some shampoo now and maybe a little bit of all-purpose cleaner but all-purpose cleaner i've got a little bit harsh for two pack paint so we'll probably go at that quite gently there we are she's been she's been positively dwelling now for about 15 20 minutes um it's loosened up a lot of the stuff so i'm just gonna set you down now and then just blast off all the snow foam and then we're gonna go at it with uh, a very 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 soft bristle brush on the paintwork just to agitate any uh any loose moss that's still on there and some very very soapy mix from a good friend of mine's uh car cleaning company based out Wrexham with um custom wizards on the Wrexham industrial estate there so if you like what you see give them a try and give them a hit oh yeah set you down now and uh, we'll give her a scrub Done. Can actually get you quite close up and personal with this passion side now. It's uh, it's very satisfying seeing it all lifting off. Before, after, before, after. More of a difference from just snow foaming and blasting it off. And I'm just going to stop and uh, get a fresh battery for this camera because it's about to die.
Well, just realised how misty it was here because I got the steamer on quite high. <laughs> and uh, yeah, quite the transformation here. She is now blue with very little green on her. And just what you can't see, just blasted out the uh, the inner arches here as well. Um, which is still a little bit stained, like you know, but just blasting off the general general mud that's inside the arches. But yeah, that's the yeah. Uh, Oop, let me slip over. That's yeah. the general snow foaming done. Now it's uh, onto the general soapy soapy work now. First half washed and rinsed off. Um, it's not perfect, I must admit. Like it's, uh, I think the the moss has et into the paint or the mould, whatever the hell it is. Like it's a little bit, you can't really see it. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic because it's soaking wet. But where it's where it's dry, if there is a dry patch on the van anywhere, it's not it's not brilliant. Like you know, and still bits of green in places where I can't quite get to with the. Um, with the pressure washer and whatnot, like, but as it goes, this half of van's all right. I think that there is a creosote stain from when this um, lean-to was erected. I think some of it must have been spilt on there, but should be able to get that out with a bit of a cut, maybe a polish. So, gonna give the front end of the van um, a swizz now. Now, I've already pre-soaked this in some all-purpose cleaner because, again, this is very, well, you can hear it, it's really etting good and proper there the mould so put some all-purpose cleaner down on there one to ten and uh, hopefully that should loosen it up and soften it up a touch so that I don't have to use too much elbow grease anyway so I'll set you down and then we'll concentrate on the front half of the van now
it's uh, still a little bit rough underneath there. Um, we are now with the stroke buckets after the APC's dwelled in. That's uh, some elbow grease is lifting off the mould, but it is well and truly etched into the paintwork. Blaster off now. Why I didn't bother washing the uh, the wings yet because I've just cleared out the gutters in front of the windscreen and they're absolutely caked in all sorts now. Yeah, all that's just come out of the gutter and all of that wall as well has just come out of that gutter. Look at the state of it. But yeah, that's unblock the drain pipes anyway. As I was saying before the uh, camera ever so rudely cut out on me. There we are. Got us unplugged. Bit of gam in there still which I'll get out. And then got her unplugged down there as well because it was full of nine years worth of whatever's in that bush and those got us there really. So yeah, front end's looking better but feel it now. Still rough. I think it might be polishable. Um, you can have a read into best way to attack this old two pack paint and that'll set you down and uh, do the really dirty side of the van although I've got most of it off there is still quite a fair bit of uh, moss and algae on there so I'll set you down and uh, we'll do that side now This is going to require something a little bit more, um, a little bit more caustic because it's very, very stuck on some of this stuff. So, um, going to chuck some more uh, all-purpose cleaner on it.
A lot bluer now, a lot bluer and less green. Much better, much, much better. Move you over. You can see a little bit more close up. Right around that boot handle is mouldy as hell. Just plug it back in. You need to kill the battery in the process. See how much skag is around that back seal there. And look how it's bleeding out from around the windscreen as well, the mould running down there. Move you back a bit so you can see it getting blasted down. There we go, that is one van after about three and a half hours, all scrubbed down. Now you know I haven't really bothered with the uh, the wheels because the scrubby old steel wheels, I've got some nice alloys to go on it at some point anyway, some old ones that used to be on an old car of mine, as luck would have it, the PCD and the uh, centre diameter and offset and all that is the right ones for this van. So. Take you on a little bit of a walk around now, let you say it's not perfect at all. This here, I think it's the paint's actually started to lift really. Uh, how can I explain it now? It's like micro lifted, loads of like micro lifting because I think what I can see there, I don't, I don't think you can quite pick it up on camera that well to be honest, but 
it looks like the paint is actually gone and I'm coming through to the primer now. It's that, uh, well you can hear it there, that rubbing and then nothing there. You can just about see it. Yeah, anyway, it's not going to be a minter, but it was all about getting the mould, the skeg and the general grime off this van. And I'll tell you what, it's uh, quite a transformation compared to how she was this morning. She's actually looking a little bit more presentable now. Admittedly, she is soaking wet. Um, I'll come back to it on a drier day, then you'll see how faded this paintwork actually is. It's, uh, it's quite shocking, to be fair, how, uh, how dull the paintwork is. Um, I'll see if I can find a dry patch for you now to see. Um, there we are. You can see how dull it is there. And uh, it's going to take some serious polish in there. It might even come to the point where it might require a respray depending on how bad it is. But that is your lot today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, part four hopefully shouldn't be too long in the making because I am wanting to get an engine in this before the colder weather sets in too much and get it up and running. And uh, start actually enjoying driving the van and then maybe looking to kit out the back of the van. So, hope you all to see you again very soon.